So today we're going to work on a little bit of a beautification project, right? How about that? Yeah. Again, in typical fashion with us, we're going to use scraps and we are going to take and transform these into this beautiful, very unique, individualized piece of art. Custom. Mm -hmm. Which actually will cost quite a lot of money to buy because it takes quite a lot of time to make. Yes. All right. So one of the neat things about DIY is you can make projects like this, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, you cannot buy at any cost because you make them, right? There's, right. There's no price you can pay for that. Also here, I would like to make an announcement. We do have an Amazon store and you can support the channel by making your purchases through our store. We do get a commission for every mail, uh, every sale that happens for everything you buy from Amazon, but it doesn't cost you anything more. So at no cost to you, you support the channel, you support us, right? Additionally, every now and then we might be putting affiliate links. We're going to make it clear all those links will be affiliate links, which also means we're going to get some commission again at no cost to you. So if you would like to support the channel without spending any extra money, we'll appreciate if you use our links. And now back to the show. So the materials are going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to use uh, remnants we have from uh, very thin plywood. And the rest of the lumber will all come from resawing two by fours. And we're going to resaw it in uh, strips like this, that then we're going to Suzuki bang. And are we going to cut them in half as well? Yep. So we're going to do a lot of resawing. But other than that, uh, that would be the general idea. What is our first step? In order to get a sense of our dimensions, we're going to start by cutting the plywood to the dimension we desire. And that is what? Uh, 20 inches by 17. And it's essentially already the 17 this way, and we've got a 40 inch long piece, so we'll just say 27. All right, so we're going to do that first. So we're starting with our piece, as we said, and we're going to, to cut, it, cut, it, cut it first to 17. It's a very small amount we need to take off, actually, right? It is not a lot. And when you do that, use the, the factory edge of the plywood to make sure that you have a perfect uh, alignment, that they're both parallel, right? right. In plywood, 99.99% of the time, the factory edge is correct. Uh, you, need, you need electricity. I need electricity, <laughs> man. For power tools, yeah, imagine. <clears throat> They're supposed to be smart tools, right? Yeah. They're not plugging themselves in? Did you stop? The trick to this cut is to make sure that your factory edge is staying very tight to your fence and then move slowly through your braid. Blade. As long as you take care of that, you're going to have excellent results and a very, very good uh, edge. Do not worry about the little tear out. In our case, it's going to be covered by trim. If it is not covered by trim, you can actually sand it away, and there are many ways to deal with it. And as you can see, it took a very small part off, right? A very small part, especially here. So it was a little uneven. Now we know it is parallel. And you can see that it tore this up a little bit. That's not a worry because we are going to have our framing around that, so that'll be covered up in here. And, and our blade is not a finished blade. No, but it's better than a rough cut blade. Right. So the next part will be to cut it to width, right? That's the height that we just cut. Right. So we're going to cut it to width. For this cut, make sure that your hands are on both sides of the blade and apply equal pressure so the piece is moving along at the same speed on both sides of the blade. Have one edge touching your fence and make sure that you use that as your reference point. When you finish one piece, use the other piece to make sure that they're in the same, um, the, the same dimension. In our case, as you can see, there was a very small variance and we knew there would be. So now the two pieces are exactly the same and we're ready to proceed with the remaining of our project. And that concludes the cutting of our substrate. We have two pieces, we're going to make two pieces, right? So that concludes the cutting that we need to do for the plywood. Next, we have a lot of cuts to do on, on two by fours. Two by fours. So we cut a piece of wood, a storyboard at four inches, because we want the, the frame, I guess, is what we call it, to be four inches. So we're going to use it to make sure that we have the correct four inch. As you can see, Alpida here is using it to, to ensure. We're going to do that in all four corners. Mm -hmm. Using a storyboard instead of measuring will ensure that you're going to have a perfect layout. We want four inches around 
And by using this method, as we saw you here, you're going to have a perfect layout yourself. So stop measuring, throw that tape measure away and start using storyboards. It will give you a much more consistent result and you're going to be much happier. All right, we'll do that in all four uh, uh, sides. And I've got all the, the little corners that I just scribed in with my storyboard. I'm just going to take a straight edge here, line those up. And again, sparing no expense, these ruler, rulers, I have a few of them and I bought them at the dollar store. But they are very lightweight. They are easy to find because we have many of them, right? I need to stop saying right. And once we have that, we, we're going to have defined the area for either uh, printing a piece of paper and putting it in there, or if you have a uh, laser, lasering, right? Engraving it. Mm -hmm. And for this particular project, we're going to use paper. But if you don't have a laser, printing it and and we've done other projects in which we glue paper, right? Mm -hmm. What is called Podge Hot? Hot Podge? Decoupage. No, no. The yes. Podge something. Mod Podge. Mod Podge. Mod uh, Podge is the actual glue that you use, but it's called decoupage. Yeah, I don't care about yes. the decoupage. But you can print it in a nice paper and put it on here if you do not have a way to engrave it. We don't care about using no terms correctly or correctness. We Americans, we don't use French terms. This is one of the many, many cuts we did onto our 2x4 to get the right pieces to build this project. We did at least 15 or 16 of those, and then we cut them in half to have the right dimensions. Using 2x4s allows you to have inexpensive wood, and then by resawing it, you can have the exact wood you want, the exact dimension you want, without having to worry a lot about buying the right wood, buying the right dimension. If you do not have a a saw that you can resaw with, then you have to buy the correct dimension, and that can be challenging sometimes. What do you mean? So we're using this little device that we've never used before, and what uh, what is neat about it is that uh, as we cut, of course, we're taking length, and then all we have to do is uh, release the pressure, push it back, and it is like an extra hand, right? release the dial and you can see there's a gap we're going to push it in to where it is up against there and that keeps it flush with your front come back here and dial it in and that's going to help you keep the the piece is like an extra hand you know yeah, yeah. okay we have about a million of these to do Maybe two million. Yeah. All right. Again, we're not going to show you all of them. We're going to do that many, many, many times. Where clearly there is no point on us knowing all of you, right? It's repetitive and boring. So we're going to get back when we're done. So we are going to Suzuki bang the, what we're calling those, the, the side pieces. Yeah. And, and the idea is, remember, we're going to cut them in half, right? So the idea is we're Suzuki bang them first uh, because the, the thinner the wood is, the more likely it is to curl with the heat. So we try to avoid that and we might create another problem, but we're going to worry about that if we create it, right? Again, Suzuki bang is a very fun way of doing this. You can also stain it if you don't know how to do it or you're afraid of catching the, the wood on fire or any other reason you, you don't want to Suzuki bang, right? This is just a personal preference for me. I really love the way it finishes the wood. So that's why we tend to do it quite often for my project because it's what I like. It's primitive for me. But you can definitely paint it or stain it or leave it as it is, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or you could use a different piece of wood and alternate them mm -hmm. so you can have a dark and a light, right? Right. Burned or not burned. Or stain different colors. Yeah. There's lots of ways to do that. So we're going to do that in all of them that we've cut. And we're not going to show you, of course, everyone because that that project takes a little bit of time in, right. in prep, right? Right. There's the first one. And you see it curls a little bit. A little bit. Ooh. Thin wood like this will have the tendency to curl as you burn it. 
and we were aware of that, but we're going to cut it in much smaller pieces. So for our project, that is not a problem. For your project, just be aware of it. As we said, we're cutting these boards in half because that is the dimension that we think will look best in our piece. However, we didn't want to cut them first and then burn them because they will have the tendency to curl and actually become unusable. That is something to consider if you're using the Suzuki Ban method of the Japanese burning as your finish for your wood. Otherwise, a fun way to do it. So here we are, and we are going to make a frame around it. And we try to decide if we like this look with the exposed, we're going to have to sand this little fuzz, right? Mm -hmm. But do we like this look with the exposed um, plywood or not? And we think we are okay with that. Yeah. But if you are not, you can put a dato in this piece. So you do not see the plywood, right? So I think we're going to go that way. We'll let you know if we change our mind. 45 degrees make the, the piece more finished, but require a lot of finesse and quite precision. Having a chop saw or a miter saw, as it's more correctly called, it's very important and valuable when you have to do a lot of 45s the way we did in this project. So after you cut your first corner and you try to go as close as you want, this is an inside corner, right? right? So you go from inside to the other corner and you mark the inside again. Since we also added a dato, you need to account for the dato when you're doing this calculation. Otherwise, you will not be correct. Remember to be in the groove when you do that. Otherwise, your, your measurement will be incorrect, right? Right. So, so we did decide to go with the um, dato. So that's what he's talking about with the groove. So we're lining that up in there. You're not lined up here, though. So once you're lined up, mark it go and make your next cut so make sure that both your angles are point inwards and you're going to do that all around for the whole piece right, right. and as you can see we finish with our uh, laser engraving so we have our uh, text here yep. again you can just print a piece of paper a fancy paper of some sort and and glue paper there if you don't have an engraver so we're going to finish this uh, frame now so here we are this is a slow moving process uh, much lower than I anticipated. But here we are on the first frame, it's upside down with a lot of uh, painter's tape and some clamps, holding it down with fast uh, drying glue, uh, which is a, a quick and thick yep. tight bond. Which we're not sponsored by, but we love. Right, we, we use tight bond primarily, right? Mm -hmm. So hopefully this will hold it together. Uh, it has a 15 minute drying time. And in the meantime, we're going to show you how to get to this po point, right? Yep. All right. So here we are, we have, uh, this is a dry fit of the other frame. We like to dry fit things before we uh, proceed. So we have dry fitted this and uh, we're ready to continue the assembly. And how that, that entails is that we're going to put glue in each of the joints and then we're going to hold it with tack nails. Pin nails is what they call. Mm-hmm. Question for you two. Mm -hmm. Should we put the frame? All right, so we're going to show you one corner. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to put glue with our hand, very fancy application applicator here. And make your connection as good as you can make it. Okay. Okay, and then we'll do that for the other three corners and come back and show you the finished frame. Correct. So with our frame assembled, we're going to put some glue and then insert the panel with the writing on it. Again, in our case, we laser edge it, but it can be just a plain piece of plywood in which you can attach a piece of paper with the words written on it. Apply liberal glue here, as even if you spill it on the other side, it's going to be hidden by the detail of your piece. So do not be stingy. When we were creating the frame, we did mark a top and bottom, so we made sure that we had our orientation correct. Orientation is very important, as sometimes you're going to find out that having it upside down might not fit correctly. Since all your measurements and dry fitting happen a certain way, make sure that you will continue using it the same way when you assemble it to ensure that you're going to have a seamless assembly without headaches. And we're clamping it to the table and we may go ahead and tape out the corners just like this one was done, but we found that the tape was not strong enough to correct the way the sheet panel was bowing. So that's why we clamped it. And then we get to let glue dry. Okay. So we're going to, we want to make a, a second 
smaller frame inside that gives it a lot of dimensionality, right? Mm -hmm. And this is our uh, dry fit right now, as you can see. And for this purpose, we're going to use hot glue because it is very fast and because this will be indoors, it is perfect application for crafts. And what is this? Like this is... These are square, square dowels. Square dowels that we had lying around from another project. Mm -hmm. And they're the perfect dimension for this. Mm -hmm. And they're not expensive. I mean, dowels mm -hmm. in general are not expensive. Right. Probably yeah. a couple of dollars. Sure. So we're going to use hot glue and, and attach those. Okay. All right, so we're ready to start the hot gluing process. And because the glue dries so quickly, we are probably, yeah, we're doing two people. Two people. Elpita is using the lines we drew earlier to align them easily and without having to remeasure anything. You don't have a lot of time with hot glue. Okay. Because hot glue is hot. Mm -hmm. You do not need a lot of glue here. Just three or four dabs will be plenty strong to keep it here. Again, this is art, it's not structure. Also, hot glue is rather forgiving. So if you make a mistake, you can remove it and try again. What Elpida is using is, if you remember earlier, we, we put lines on. So she's using those lines to align the pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Great job there, but I found it, I guess. This is very satisfyingly quick. Hot glue dries almost instantaneously and provides a very good grab, especially for small pieces like this. Ah! Right here, Elpida just touched a little bit of hot glue and reminded her how hot hot glue really is. While it is an easy way to attach wood pieces together or craft pieces together, it can burn you very, very quickly if you are not very careful. It is very satisfying to see the, the piece coming together the way we envisioned it. Having two people here is very useful. One to apply the glue and the other person to apply the glued piece into the substrate. You can do it yourself, but the second person is a great help in this case. And just like that, our interior frame and our exterior frame are done. This step took quite a lot of time since there are a lot of small pieces that we have to attach here and each piece has two angles that we have to cut. Initially we start using our miter saw but then we moved into a small hand held saw because the pieces were so small and they were not really hard to cut by hand. Sometimes it is the best approach compared to a power tool. Even with a power tool you can see that's quite a lot of work. It's delicate work. It takes time to make sure you do it correctly and you do not have place for error. So we got to the end of one side and we needed to make sure we were going to go in the right direction to make it a herringbone. So we put one in place in the opposite direction of the long pieces we have here mm -hmm. to keep us on track. And so the sides are going to be this kind of chevron looking and then as we get into here we're going to start stacking it so that they are up against each other and give you that herringbone look here mm -hmm. and then also up here. Yeah. So now we've gotten more of the background put in and as you can see once you start getting to this point you're starting to do that uh, pattern, herringbone. herringbone pattern <laughs> where they butt up against each other. Um, and so the next piece will come up in here and it will just keep going there like that. And then we'll do the same thing at that end. Okay. Our project is moving along, but it is a very slow process, right? Yep. You need patience and it takes time and a lot of detailed work, the little pieces. It actually takes lo took so far longer than we anticipated. Oh yeah. But that's part of the deal, right? You do and you learn. Yep. Now take care not to force those pieces because you don't want to put those, uh, the screens you made apart. Not the screens, but the frames. Right. But other than that, you should be in good shape. Take your time and uh, slow but steady does it, right? Yes. Hopefully we'll be able to finish a video for you guys, but you will not finish everything we were planning to do. A small hand saw turned out to be the best tool for this and we switched to that as the pieces became smaller and the cuts became more delicate. Again this is your choice and small hand saws have come to the rescue for a lot of our projects in the past.
We're getting there. We're upside down, but we're getting there. <laughs> So here, here are the two different stages, the big transformation points of our two pieces. Here we have finished the frame, but we have not done anything else, right? Mm -hmm. We of course have done the uh, laser edging, mm -hmm. and it can came, it, it can came, it came out very very <laughs> nicely. Yeah. And here, and you can see how this changes it, right? Yeah, it totally transforms it. So you can stay something simply like that, or for example, you can just paint it. Mm -hmm. There are some faint lines you can see here, and you could use like painter's tape and al align them and then paint them. That would be a faster mm -hmm. way to do it. But Or you could even, if you liked that framed look, you could still just put the, the simple frame in it. Right, which is what we did here. Yeah, there's lots of things that you can do with it. Right, there, there are a lot of variability. Mm -hmm. All right, so next step. And so this is our finished product for today, right? Mm -hmm. And we way underestimated how long this will take, right? Mm -hmm. Now now we understand why art pieces are so expensive. Yes. Because <laughs> we this were really only paid for this. This really <laughs> took us a lot of no no for the yeah. right amount of money, we'll, we'll sell it to you guys. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. This took a lot of time, right? There are a lot of cuts, a lot of fine cuts and, and fitment and uh, as I said it was a lot of time. So we only finished one of the two. Mm -hmm. The other one, you want to bring it to me? It's in process. It, it's going to be finished, but not for this video. Right. But it will be very similar, correct? Correct. Yes. Because we want them to match in, in a wall, in one wall. Yep. And we might do a little sort of something, show them to you when they are both finished. Mm -hmm. And maybe hang. But what we learned from that, first of all, when you have not done a project, don't try to estimate how long it will take you. You will be wrong. <laughs> right? <Yes. laughs> Very wrong. <laughs> we, we were completely off our rocker on this one. Secondly, there are ways to do this faster. And one of the ways will be not to miter the corners and not to date the, the frame, right? Yeah, that takes some time. You can certainly do it faster, but it will not look as finished and as good looking in the end. Ultimately, it is whatever you like. The datos, as you can see here, I can't really see provide it. a much better fitment, but they take mm -hmm. much more time. Right. Easily four or five <clears throat> times than if you make straight cuts, right? And so this is the profile of it, and that's one of the angle cuts, and that's how it fits. And so the, the back backing plywood fits right in there, so it looks And as I said, it, it nice. makes it very finished. There's no question about it. Mm -hmm. And you can see the edge here that all you see is that. And you don't see the plywood substrate at all. Right. And that makes it look nice. Mm -hmm. But again, it takes time. If you want to save some time, you can make straight cuts here and just put it on top. Mm -hmm. That will save you a lot of time. This, I don't see you can save a lot of time. Uh, this is a very Not if you're going to do this. It's a very time-consuming process. So the cost of this really boils down to time, right? The material for us was scrap. Right. We didn't have any cost. And what, what equipment you use? A lot of the cuts actually were done with a handsaw, as, as you for, saw in the video. For this fitting right. part. But most of the cuts can be done with a hand saw. Right. We did use a table saw, and we use a table saw to make the data here as mm -hmm. well. You can use a router table mm -hmm. to do the same thing, but you need one of those two tools. Datos are very hard. Um, what am I saying? Just that that's, that's one of the things. So we took a two by four and... and that's what's left from it. <laughs> yeah, that's what's left of it. And so that's how thin we cut them. Right. Uh, in order to make these and we also ripped them down the middle so that they were half the width there and that's what's making these but it took us time to cut these down from the two by four and we had to cut quite a few so we took a length of this mm -hmm. and made many 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 lengths of this mm -hmm. and then we took this and suzuki bind them and made this right Put so there are a lot of process time there as well right mm -hmm. i think that's part of why it took us time right and uh, we learned a lot. I think the, the, the second one would be a little faster. Yeah, for sure. In the process. But what did we learn, ladies? Allow a lot hot of time. Hot glue is hot. Hot glue is hot. I relearned that lesson today. But um, it's also wonderful for th projects like that. Yeah, yeah. For this, it's invaluable because it's a very quick, easy way. You're not going to see any type of fastener uh, holes, for instance. And it just holds it in place very, very well. Absolutely. Uh, also, take your time. Mm -hmm. 
this is for a patient challenge person like me. <laughs> uh, that can be a very frustrating process, right? It just right. takes. It is very detailed, and you have to make each piece one at a time to make right. sure that it fits. Because if you don't, then you're assuming everything is exactly perfect from side to side, top to bottom, and that's not always the case. And I'm sure that even though we're going to use the same process, mm -hmm. the second one will be somewhat different than this, right? I mean, it, yeah. it is the nature of the, the beast. And visually, you can't tell if any of the angles are off or different than, you know, say whatever your main angle is, but uh, when you're cutting them, that's when it makes a difference. And part of it is because a lot of little details, like if these are not perfectly parallel, yeah, the angle would change a little bit. And of course, this wood is not perfect. There are going to be some bowing or mm -hmm. some... In fact, when we're ripping it, we found that out. Right. The thickness of the 2 by 4 was different right. so along the length. A change in thickness will change your angle. Right. In a perfect world, this angle is 45 degrees. Mm -hmm. But we found out our world was not perfect. Nope. Not even close to perfect, right? That said, I'm still very, very pleased with how it has turned out. I think it looks really beautiful. Even with all the time it took? Yeah. And these actually, now we know how to make them, and I think this can be useful in other projects, projects as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, as you can see, they're very nice, very consistent, right? I mean, mm -hmm. a little project by itself, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> and, you know, we're really set on using materials that we have instead of buying additional ones. And mm -hmm. so all of the pieces that we have obviously came from the shop. We had them on hand, but we mm -hmm. had to modify exactly what the source was to, to get the fi finished product. And just for point, this is called re-sewing, right? Mm -hmm. We re-sew a, a two by four and made this, whatever the dimension is, I don't know. They're like... It's a two by something. Yeah, <laughs> quarter inch maybe. But yeah, I mean, it, the, but by resawing you save money. Mm -hmm. To resaw, you need to to have either a table saw or a track saw. It is impossible to do it with anything else not, than one of those things, right? Mm -hmm. Well, folks, this is our episode for today. It's getting dark outside, and I haven't started editing yet. So we're going to to close it at this moment by thanking you all for watching. If you have reached this point, thank you so very much if you've watched it all the way through here. We appreciate your support. And from a Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and Elpida, let's build something together.